Happy Sunshine Family, Lunacy's back. It is November 11th, 2018, or 11, 11, and numerologically the 2018 reduces to 11. What an interesting day. I was checking up on the case details for Wolfgang Haubig's uh, latest legal action involving Sandy Hook. This is the lawsuit where eight parents and an FBI agent are suing Alex Jones and naming Wolfgang Haubig as a co-defendant. Let me take you over to the page I'm talking about so you can see it for yourself. I probably need to blow this up a little bit for you. There we go. You can see it was originally filed on the 23rd of May of 2018. And coming all the way down here, interestingly enough, filed on 11-9, or the ninth day of the 11th month, or 9-11, is this claim for jury of six. Now this is pretty interesting, because when I open up the file, and let's get you over to a different window so you can see that. Claim for jury, State of Connecticut Superior Court. Uh, it's called Claim 6 for court use only. Instructions. This claim must be accompanied by the appropriate jury fee, Section 52-258 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Two. When pleadings are closed, a certificate of closed pleadings must also be filed. The return date, June 26, 2018. Wonder why, wonder why that's the date. It was filed on the 9th of November. Docket number. FBT-CV-18-607-5078-S. dash 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 to the Superior Court. Lafferty, comma, Erica et al. v. Jones, comma, Alex Emmerich et al. Judicial District, 1061 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06604. This case is claimed for the inventory of jury cases. A certificate of closed pleadings must be filed before the case named above can be placed on the inventory of jury cases. This is claim filed by plaintiff's attorney, Koskoff, Koskoff, and Biter, PC, 350 Fairfield Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06604. Phone number 203-336-4421. Certification. I certify that this claim is filed in accordance with Section 52-215 of the Connecticut General Statutes and that a copy of this document was mailed or delivered electronically or non-electronically on November 9th, 2018. To all attorneys and self-represented parties of record, and that written consent for electronic delivery was received from all attorneys and self-represented parties receiving electronic delivery. Name and address of each party and attorney that copy, that copy was mailed or delivered to. Rayner, Taylor, Curran, and Eddie, 100 Pearl Street, 4th Floor, Hartford, Connecticut, 06103, and Wilson, Elser, Moskowitz, Eidelman, and Dicker, 1010 Washington Boulevard, 8th floor, Stamford, Connecticut, 06901. Signed, this is interesting, it's just signed with a number here, 438605. Printed name, Matthew Samuel Blumenthal, on November 9th, 2018. And he's got the 350 Fairfield Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut mailing address. And the phone number is the same one that, that I read before. And now we have uh, our certification of service. 
Name and address at which service was made. J. Woolman, 100 Pearl Street, 14th floor, Hartford, Connecticut. Wolfgang Halbig, self-represented, 25526 Hawks Run, Lane, Sorrento, Florida, 32776. End of certification service. So this is an additional form that was filed in the courts under the action that Wolfgang Halbig is a party to. Now, I was wondering, what is this claim for jury of six? Uh, I'm not sure if this means six members on the jury. I'm familiar with 12 on the jury. I'm not familiar with a situation for six. But I went over here to Law and Business and Stuff with Fran Slusars. This was posted five years, five, almost six years ago. But I believe it's pertinent to this document that was filed concerning the Sandy Hooks case. Number one way to lose your right to a jury trial in Connecticut. It's simple. Confuse joining of issues of fact with closing the proceedings. Right? What? Claiming a lawsuit for jury trial list is yet another trap for the unwary in Connecticut state court practice. Because a party must pay $425 to file a jury claim, it is rarely, if ever, filed when a case is filed, because no case makes it to, trial, to the trial list until a certificate of closed pleadings is filed, and the certificate contains a nifty checkbox to check indicating that you are also filing a jury claim form and paying a fee. Many practitioners make the mistake of thinking that the due dates are the same. They aren't. There is no due date for the certificate of closed pleadings. The certificate of closed pleadings just lets the court know that you are ready to have your case added to the queue for a trial. Most plaintiffs want to file the certificate of closed pleadings as soon as possible because the queue can last a few years. Most defendants do not care because the longer the wait until trial, the better. I don't know if that's necessarily true in Wolfgang's case. The time to file is jury claim. The time to file a jury claim maybe? I'm going to go with A. The time to file a jury claim, however, is governed by the Connecticut General Statutes 52-215, which states, after five single-spaced lines mandating the keeping of a docket, the date by which the case must be docketed, and what information the docket must contain. Quote, when in any of the above named cases an issue of fact is joined, the case may, within 10 days after such issue of fact is joined, be entered in the docket as a jury case upon the request of either party made to the clerk. Translation, the jury claim must be filed within 10 days after the last issue of fact is joined, and they mean it. I just want an objection to an untimely jury claim. Plaintiff needed that jury, but he isn't getting one. Cue maniacal laughter. So when is the final issue of fact joined? It depends. If the defendant does not raise special defenses, the issue of fact are joined upon filing the answer. If the defendant does ra raise special defenses, issues of fact are joined upon filing a reply to the special defenses. If parties file counterclaims, cross-claims, or third-party claims, it is the same. The answer or reply to the special defenses. It gets a little tricky with amended complaints because the court has to look at the substance of the amended pleadings to see if new issues of fact are actually raised, but the concept is the same. The moral of the story? In Connecticut practice, if you want a jury to hear your case and you are relying upon your understanding of the gist of the practice book or title 52 or alert your carrier. And then it looks like there's a, a footnote denoted by asterisk, which would come right back up here. There is no due date for the certificate of closed pleadings. 
And it says, well, technically there can be a due date, but it is not set until the case is about to be dismissed for dormancy. Then the administrative judge of your judicial district orders you to close the pleadings by a certain date or the case will be dismissed. So that's a little bit of information about this last filing here. It was filed on the plaintiff's side. And it appears to be a document that must be filed if you ever want this action to see a jury. All right. Well, we certainly wish Wolfgang Halbig all the ease and safety and articulation of truth that grace can possibly bestow upon him. If you've got any information on this case or any others, especially Wolfgang Halbig or Timothy Charles Holmseth, send me an email, lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot. I will be back soon. Bye-bye.